my five priorities will be ambition, 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 and ambition. Our goal in climate change is to reach and who do not access this land. The Paris Committee on Capacity Building has received a mandate by the COP to uh, consider cross-cutting issues like gender responsiveness, human rights uh, and indigenous people's knowledge in the implementation of its work plan. And what this essentially really means is that the PCCB is focusing a lot on the important human dimension of capacity building and not just on the technical side. Today we are um, doing this workshop of human rights and climate change and how do we integrate human rights and climate change and why this is important. Part of the workshop is, is uh, specifically to talk about what a rights-based approach adds to uh, and, and how, it, how it ensures that climate action um, will protect both people and planet. And another part of the workshop is to raise awareness of how climate change impacts human rights and, and the interlinkages between, between those two things so that people can better understand how to address human rights and the commitment of the Paris Agreement to respect, promote and consider human rights when taking climate action. In the workshop we did to discuss three topics in more depth and working groups. One was integration of human rights and NDCs, the other one was a focus on indigenous peoples and then just transition. And what was really interesting to see was that gender was picked up in all of these working groups. We know that if we don't take a rights-based approach to climate action, some of the efforts we're making to address climate change can actually have negative impacts on human rights. For the communities who using the land rights and who do not access this land because the land is degraded is the right to food. If there is not enough water and then people cannot have it for the entire 12 months a year is a right to water and it's the right to food security. Human rights, gender, the role of cities, education, or better action for climate empowerment, and of course, indigenous communities. For indigenous peoples, human rights based approach to climate change actions is very important in order to do not have the false solutions. For me, that came out really strongly in the discussions on just transition was that a gender perspective is a must in any human rights based approach. So that was kind of the intersection um, of things. And then from a capacity building perspective, really to build the capacities to understand and to analyze the gender dynamics that are happening in a certain society at a certain point to then effectively address them. And this goes to voice, this goes to including different people in the conversation, and this also goes to not making any assumption about who is affected in what manner, but to actually critically look at it and do the analysis. We expect uh, this workshop to contribute to a couple of different outcomes. We're working on a uh, guidelines and good practices for integrating human rights and nationally determined contributions. And we'll also be working with the UNFCCC Secretariat on an uh, online training module uh, on human rights and climate change.